Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the chance to work on a pen ultralight reel. This is the pen 716Z. I'm unsure, I think this one was the one that was reintroduced in 1995, but the originals came out in 1966 and they had a run to about 19, well, mid 70s. And then, uh, well, because of the popularity, Penn did reintroduce certain models of the seven six uh, of the Z series in 1995 for a short run. This one's got well a little bit of an interesting problem. This comes from Joel in Connecticut. He tells me that his spool is not going all the way down. And sure enough, if you look here, you're going to see a gap in that spool right there. It certainly shouldn't be. That should be nested inside the rotor cup. But uh, for some reason, something's going on there. And the reel is kind of turning sluggishly. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to figure out what's going on here. And we'll also show you how to service the reel. Well, if you like these types of videos, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting. And, uh, well, you can see if that's a video you would like to watch. Today, it's a, uh, well, it's a vintage uh, freshwater ultralight reel. Tomorrow it might be a big saltwater conventional reel like this, uh, this Penn Mariner here. Or uh, it might be a, uh, a low-profile bass reel. I don't know. Well, I started by taking off that handle. Let's take the spool off, see if we can see anything. Let's rotate the down. Well, we certainly have the axle shaft is going down. I mean, it's sluggish. There's probably grease buildup in there, but that should be where it is. It's like, oh, there. Yeah, yeah, okay, that'll do it. <laughs> well, whoever had this spool apart took the spool adjuster, which is this three-pronged adjuster, which belongs under the cap here, and he put it on the bottom of the reel. Hmm, curious, but that certainly will cause that to be the issue. Pull this out, remove that, the little tension washer belongs on the shaft here, like that. Now we can put this back up and in. The double sides are down on this. The adjuster cap should go on now. That should fix that problem, problem number one. I uh, was just writing somebody in my comments section. I said, you know, if there's two ways to put something on, somebody will put it on the wrong way. Yeah, there you go. Now we're you know, stuck deep in the cavity for low. That's doing what it should be doing there now. Yep. The, and you can see at the top of the stroke, it's flush with the bottom here. All right. Solve problem number one. Let's uh, take the real part, show you how to service this and uh, how to keep this one fishing nice. One of the things I like to do when I'm servicing the reel is make sure that the anti-reverse is off. Seems like it's off regardless. So there must be something going on inside too. My guess is that what's going on inside is that the, uh, the grease has probably frozen the anti-reverse. All right, well, these are nice freshwater reels. Penn has been in and out of those freshwater reel segments. They really made their name in the saltwater segments. And uh, every now and then you'll see Penn making a, uh, a, a lighter version. Today's, I guess, version of those would be the Conflicts. Uh, but, uh, yeah, okay, I'm just making sure that I have that set right. The uh, Conflicts, but you know, they've made a low-profile bait caster for a little while, and then that went away. And you see an ultralight every now and then, but that's not their focus. Okay, I'm going to remove the screw that's holding the axle shaft in. We're going to pull up and out on that axle shaft if we can. Remove that. And when you're doing your service of these reels, the service of the reel includes the cleaning, inspection, removal of the old greases, and uh, then re-lubrication. All right, let's take the top off next. We're kind of bouncing around here a little bit. We'll make sure to get it all done. And this one has a US thread to it. 
but I think the 10 millimeter probably works as well. That's because these were made before a pen changed over uh, to metric pieces and components. This comes off in a traditional counterclockwise manner. And when I take all my pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. Let's remove the bowl. And then inspect to make sure that your bell is working. Well, this one's tight. It's not flipping very well. We'll have to figure out why that is. Usually, a lot of the time, these things can be solved just by simple addition of some penetrating oil on some pieces that haven't worked in a while. Sometimes it's a bent bale that's causing it. Yeah, there you go. Just flipped right away just with the addition of some, uh, some penetrating oil. Also looks like uh, this bale may be bent a little too much, but we'll worry about that in a little while. All right, let's go back to this. We've removed the axle shaft, so now we can remove the gear and the crosswind. We should be able to get that crosswind arm off of there. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures. As you're removing these pieces and parts, take a picture. Make sure that you uh, have a reference point for, well, when it's time to reinstall and maybe you've lost the, uh, the thought. Right? A lot of times we trust our, our minds. And a lot of times, well, when we go, we find out that we have checked our minds at the door and uh, forgot where some of these pieces and parts go. All right, I'm going to just scrub that up a little bit here. Looks like I might need another piece of uh, steel wool, and I don't see that I have it around here. So let me go grab a, a piece. I'm using a uh, 4.0 steel wool. It's, uh, it's the fine. Variety. It's not very abrasive, but every now and then you need that um, a little bit of abrasion. Like, well, right here, this is a good example. There's a lot of old dried grease on this arm. And in the combination with metal uh, cleaner, there's a little scraping going on. That's no question, that's what's slowing the reel down, is this grease. We have it on both sides. So every time that stroke is involved, it's certainly causing an issue. All right, there we go. All right. And for the most part, I like to clean these on a paper towel. That way I don't transfer the, the dirt to, an, to the next assembly. We're going to put that in the, the case. We're going to look at this. Same idea here. We've got that dried grease around the, the little ferrule. Well, that's going to slow it when it's time for it to spin because it's going to trip over it like a pothole every time it comes by. So let's do the same thing on the main gear. Don't want to lose that, so we'll put that little washer ferrule in the, uh, in the box. Come by and clean that up as well. Doesn't take much, but it needs to be done. Okay. Polish that. I'm going to grab a bristle brush. I want to pull through on the teeth, make sure that all of the greases are out of the teeth. There you are. Here's your anti-reverse uh, ratchet in the back. That's not the issue. I'll just fold this over. And uh, this thing should be bringing back this anti-reverse story. It looks like it's in fine stead. I'm going to just take this last part out before I go with that anti-reverse dog, which seems to be part number two that's a little bit at issue here. And it's probably going to be the same thing that went on with the um, the bale. This is, I suspect that it's just got a lot of dried grease in there and stuck in its plane and it's not doing what it should be doing. Let's remove the collar. Should be able to pull up and out on this. There we go. Chris, my streak is still alive. There you go. Chris seems to marvel that most of the time these things come out. He did provide me, he and Rick provided me with a, uh, a hammer, a uh, slide hammer to assist in this. Well, 
So I say I haven't used it yet, but uh, that doesn't mean I won't. For, that's for getting particularly stubborn gear shafts out. Do that. Test that bearing. That bearing's working fine. What we need to do here is drop a little oil on that. I'll let that oil sit in or seep in. This is a uh, shielded, not a sealed bearing, so it will seep in. And while I have the case open here, we're going to do two things. I'm going to spray the case with some penetrating oil. I'm going to spray that little anti-reverse dog assembly with some penetrating oil, just like we did with the rotor and the veil. And that should help to solve the issue. This case is very dry, so it's interesting. I had originally thought the issue would be too much grease, and we come to find out it's too little. Well, I'm in the active position now, and you can see the little bit of oil there. Amazing. Just brings it right in. Now we're going to set it to off so that when we reset that main gear, we're okay there. We just had this little piece come out. This little piece is actually the trip lever that goes in here. I just got to remember which way it sits. Okay, the reel's been cleaned internally. So let's uh, let's start reassembling these parts and we'll figure out what that little part is there. All right, we've cleaned the main gear. Let's put that back in first. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease now to grease the reel. A little bit onto the rotating shaft for the, the gear and onto the teeth. You do not need to, to put grease onto the click ratchet on the back. Actually, grease would probably uh, cause issues there. A little bit of grease onto the front. Bring that in. And we can seat that. And if you like, right now, we can reinstall that handle. That'll help keep that main gear in place as we work on the other pieces that connect to it. So let's put that handle back on. I'm going to have to tighten it all the way down in the end, but just uh, know that that does help steady that piece. All right. Next up, what we would like to do then is get our spiral pinning gear. We've oiled that bearing, and now we can get a good amount of grease into the teeth onto the spiral gear. We can reset that into the holder and down below and make sure that your bearing sits flush. Now we can deal with the piece. I think this is the way that the piece goes. We'll find out in a moment. It's always a moment of truth there, right? All right. There is a side that has tapered holes that goes into the slots. Now, generally you need a micro driver, which is why that's on my table here. Get those little screws started and in. And to me, these little screws are always fun to play with. We don't play well together. And I'm actually going to try the little screw starter that I have. See if that doesn't work a little bit better. All right, that, that certainly helps. And we'll put the other one in. And uh, while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to ask questions if you have any. It doesn't have to be on this reel. Maybe you're working on a reel and can't figure out quite uh, how to solve whatever the issue might be. Leave those in the comment section. I will try to answer those to the best of my ability. I uh, got one today on a, on a Mitchell reel where the, the handle isn't holding. Uh, but I get questions all the time. I don't mind answering them. And, uh, well, if you have one, please leave it there. All right, the bowl. We've kind of done nothing more than use some penetrating oil on it right now. So if we, uh, if we find out that's not enough, what we're going to want to do 
in a little bit is to um, work on a possible bent bail. But for now, we're just going to put this on, see if it fires. Tighten by hand first so that you don't cross strip that thread on your piece. Then use your ratchet to the extent that you can. And then the final quarter of a turn or so, you can use that ratchet fully. All right. You can turn it right now, see how it's working. It's working nice and smooth, that's for sure. Let's see if that bell fires before we do anything else. Yeah, that bell's fired. So we're in good shape there. Let's take the axle shaft and place that in. Note the hole on the bottom of the axle shaft. The screw from the cross wind block is going to go on that. We'll just rest that there for a moment. Because the next piece that we want to install is the little washer. And the tie down for that washer. I can try to do this by hand. That way you don't risk the uh, oops, silly me. And put the cross wind arm on. But I know that I got the screw started anyway. There you go. Let's put that into place. Cross wind arm. And I like to just get it set. I don't need to put the screw in into the shaft at this point. I'm more concerned about getting the other part in. Do the line up again. And again, you can use that screw start if you like. Just have some patience. And you need to make sure on this that the screw head goes all the way down and seats in the collar. With that in, we can now align that little hole in the axle shaft. And the thinner screw goes there. So let's tighten that down. So, so far we've taken the reel apart completely. We've inspected all the pieces and parts. We've ensured that they weren't broken. We noticed that there's a lot of dried grease in here, which is probably the cause of a couple of things. One of them being the poor performance on that bale. The other being the sluggishness of turning. Well now, no issues there. Let's, uh, let's take this and put that into active anti-reverse mode. Oh yeah, we got a nice click, click, click as we should for that anti-reverse. So we can cover this up now. It's easy enough to do. It's only one screw holding that cover in. Go to your parts tray and get that screw. We'll tighten this down. Then we found out that the person who had that spool apart, probably to change the spool washer or something, put the tension washer for the top incorrect. That's why the spool was running high. So put that spool on. Make sure that it locks in. Tighten it down. Make sure you got the washer. We do. Back it off. Okay. So let's give it a test. Well, it's running nice and free and easy. And let's check that uh, that bail performance now. We got a nice operating bail there. This reel is ready to be returned to Joel so that he can take it fishing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, again, please subscribe. And uh, if you uh, have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I will try to answer those for you. To our first responders, our police, fire, rescue, everybody involved in public safety, thank you for your efforts. I do appreciate your career choice and dedication to service. And to everybody, please 
enjoy the art of real repair. Get those ready. The season's coming at you real quick. And uh, make sure that they are ready to go when the fish run is on. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.